We're gonna more talk about some specific tips and tricks and strategies that I think will help you get a lot better results with your short form content. So let's get into it with the first one. Get out there, look for what your target audience are watching and what kind of content they're resonating with. When you're actually looking for examples of what's working well, you can literally just open up YouTube shorts, for example, and just scroll through and see what you get. Or if you wanna find just the top shorts in your specific area, a little trick that you can use is you literally just add in the name of the game that you're playing. If you're playing a specific game and then add the keyword shorts after that. And then I would recommend adding the following filters. So what you can do is under duration, make sure you change it to under four minutes. And then if you wanna filter by like the top ranking videos or shorts, then you can go over onto the sort by row on the bar right and sort by view count. And what that's gonna do is almost all of the time, it's gonna get you the vast majority of the results being YouTube shorts. And the view count is gonna have the top YouTube shorts descending all the way down to the smaller YouTube shorts. So great way to get a feel for what's out there in your niche. Now, when when I say get a feel, when I say look at these case studies, there are some specific areas that you should be looking at. So the first is look at the length of the content. Like are people in your niche resonating with shorter 10 to 15 second videos or does it seem like the more successful shorts are the ones that are longer, you know, 55 seconds ish. Have a look and see what other people are having success with, with a similar target audience to yours because that can be helpful in informing you as to how long your content should be as well. Also, you wanna look at how the content is actually designed itself. Now, when I say how the content's designed, what I mean is basically how it's been edited. So have a look, are they kind of having four by five style edits with blurred out sides? Are they having square content with just big black bars? Or are they having pretty much full screen content where there are no black bars or blurred out bars? Are they using text in their shorts? Are they using music? Are they not using music? Are they using sound effects? Are they zooming in and zooming out a lot? Have a look at how they're actually editing their content. See what appears to be resonating with other people because again, that can really inform you as to what you should be doing with your stuff. Also have a look at the content itself. So the material within the video itself. So like how are people presenting the short form content in order to effectively engage and grab people's attention? Like if you're a tutorial creator, have a look out there and see what are other tutorial creators doing in order to attract attention on shorts? Are they creating really short tutorials or are they just creating shorts showing off the end result of their tutorials? Or are they giving quick tips and tricks? Are they giving one specific tip for each short? Like how are they actually designing the content itself? And again, that's gonna give you some ideas as to what might be working well within your niche. The last thing as well that would be helpful for you to look at is calls to action. So a call to action is where the creator is calling the viewer to take a certain type of action. Usually the creator is calling the viewer to take the action of subscribing. They're asking the viewer to subscribe to their channel. Have a look and see, are these creators using calls to action? What calls to action are they using? If you're seeing like uh, large creators who appear to be having a lot of success with YouTube shorts using the same type of call to action repetitively, and again, that could be helpful for you because chances are if they are large and they're doing a lot of these things, they might've tested different calls to action and they found one that's more efficient and they used that one. Now that's their kind of go-to and you can skip over all of their trial and error and just jump straight to the thing that works just by doing what they're doing. If this tutorial video, like anything that comes after what I'm speaking about now, doesn't address something or you still have questions about something short form content related, that's where this tip will come in really handy. Like look at what's already out there. Look at what people are doing. Try to see what other people have done in order to address the thing you have concerns about or have questions about. And chances are if they're large creators and they're doing that thing repetitively and it's getting them success, well then that's an answer in and of itself. And that's telling you what you should be doing. All right, the next tip I have for you is to repurpose content. It saves time if you just repurpose content that you're already creating. Obviously the content needs to be good and it needs to be applicable and you'll probably need to edit it a bit differently in order to work for short form platforms. I wouldn't normally recommend that you go out there and create content specifically for these short form platforms, just purely from a time spent perspective. That time is better spent probably working on your primary form of content and then just cut down your primary form of content and try to create short form content off of that. The other reason this is kind of helpful is that if you are using your primary form of content in your short form content, then it ensures that there's a connection between those two things. Even if they're edited slightly differently or if they, like obviously they'll be different in feel, but the actual material, like the, the core substance 
audience itself has to be similar because they're both coming from the same asset, from the same video. And that's a good thing because you don't want to be attracting people who would not be interested in your full length videos. And that kind of leads me to my next tip, which is your short form content must still attract the types of viewers who would want to watch your full length videos as well. So for example, if you are a Roblox ASMR channel, you probably shouldn't go off there and be making Minecraft meme shorts. Because even if your Minecraft meme shorts get a lot of attention, it's not going to actually help you achieve your end goal. My next tip is to make content, not promotions. There's a subtle difference here, but it's a very important subtle difference. And that is that when you're making your short form content, even if you're repurposing content from already created videos, it needs to feel like a complete piece of content in and of itself. It should not feel like a promo for your full videos. It should not leave viewers on a cliffhanger. It should not leave a loop open. You want to close the loop at the end of that short form piece of content. You don't want viewers to watch your YouTube shorts, say, and leave that short feeling dissatisfied because they haven't fully got the value that they were wanting to get. What you want to do is you want to create short form content that's really good in and of itself, that's so good that people are like, man, this little video was so great. Imagine what this guy could do or this girl could do with a full length video. Like, I want to watch more of this creator. That's the vibe you're going for, not some kind of like teaser trailer for your full content. This one's super important, all right? The next one is everything needs to be super fast paced and engaging. I believe on YouTube, you generally want to keep things fast paced and engaging in general, but especially for short form content where the viewer can literally move to a completely new video with a single flip of their finger. The millisecond they get bored, just flip, new video. You need to be incredibly engaging throughout your entire video because there's no friction between them continuing to watch your video and them going on to watch the next video. You also want to pay special attention to your hook. You want to grab viewers in right away. You have three, five seconds max to grab people's attention. And if you don't do it in that amount of time, they will be flicking their fingers and moving on to the next YouTube short. Aside from just keeping your edit snappy and speeding up the pace a bit, a tip can be to use text in your shorts. Often you'll find that adding text is a really easy way to add more visual interest and more pattern interrupts without having to get super creative with the editing. So if you're narrating in your short, you can use text to emphasize certain words that you might be saying during your short. Have the text pop up as you say it instead of it just being there on screen. Or maybe you can use text to supplement what's already happening in the video to add an extra layer of entertainment or comedy or explanation or whatever it is, right? Just add it like text gives the brain something additional to occupy it as it's going through and watching your content. And while you shouldn't distract your viewers' brains from the actual content, the text that you add has to be very related and connected to the content that's actually showing on that screen at that particular moment. If you do it right, which isn't that hard to do, it can be really, really beneficial to your short form content. The next tip I have is to use relevant hashtags and tags to tell the algorithms what your short form content is all about. So it's more important that you create a great piece of content that people are actually going to want to watch. But it does give the AI a little bit more of an idea as to who should promote that content to in the beginning to see whether or not they like it. Now, my recommendation is usually you should put around five hashtags onto your posts. That's not a hard and fast rule. There's no magic number that you can just magically put five and all of a sudden like the algorithm goes click and like you just unlock all this hidden potential. But I would roughly keep it to five if I was you. It's super easy to add these hashtags when you're uploading. You literally just type the hashtag symbol and then whatever the hashtag is and drop it into your post's description. And in terms of actually finding hashtags, if you're terrible with hashtags like me, you can use the service called Systrix. It's super easy. All you have to do is enter a few related hashtags hashtags or topics to what it is that your piece of short form content is about. And it will generate a list of related hashtags that are actually based on data and what people are interested in related to the seed hashtags you put in originally. So it can be really helpful and you can get up to 25 free searches in this search bar per day. So I mean, like unless you're doing a vast amount of shorts research and hashtag research, then this should be more than enough for you. The next tip is to keep it between five and 58 seconds. And that might seem a bit obvious. Most of you might be like, well, yeah, that's pretty much all short form content. But the reason I kind of added this in here is because I've seen people throwing around these magic numbers like, oh, your short has to be 15 seconds or your short has to be between 16 and 34 seconds. But I want to convey to you that there are no magic numbers. There's no secret number that like you use this length of content and all of a sudden like the algorithm loves you and just like promotes you like crazy, right? What matters is that the content itself is actually good and the runtime should match that content. So if your video requires 58 seconds, seconds in order to convey that the story or the value or whatever that it needs to convey, that's fine. It should take that long. Look at how long the maximum length your content actually needs to be in order to best portray the value 
that you're trying to do and that's the number you should be going for. The next little tip I have is to add a call to action to the end of your little video. The call to action on YouTube is often just some arrows appearing up on the screen and just pointing down to the where the subscribe button would be sitting and then have some text saying something like subscribe for full videos. Once they see your content and if they enjoy your content, you want them to actually take an action and end up on your channel, hopefully watch some of your flagship content and become loyal followers, not think that was great and move on. And that's what a call to action is going to help you do. So here are some examples of YouTube shorts, but you get the idea. And this is kind of the thing you're going for, right? You want to go for something that's short and punchy and to the point. And in terms of when you should be putting this call to action, you should be putting it at the end of the video and you should probably give it between two to four seconds before the video is going to end. It could be something like you can see up on screen right now. And if you're talking in your video, it'd also be great if you can auditorily encourage people to take that action so that they're going to be more likely to do that. The other thing that you want to do in terms of call to actions is to put a call to action in the comments section of that video. So on YouTube, what you want to do is pin a link to a relevant video to that particular short that they're watching at the top of the comment section of that short with a phrase probably along the lines of click here to watch the full video. Now, again, there's no magic words here. If you want to deviate from that call to action, that's totally fine, but that's probably what I would do if I was in your situation. Now on YouTube shorts, if you are looking through your analytics, one thing I want to stress here is that yes, you will notice that adding calls to action to your shorts will hurt your results. And in fact, adding calls to action to pretty much anything doesn't improve your results. But remember the purpose of this short form content in the first place is to actually encourage people to check out your long form content, your flagship content and subscribe to your channel. Yes, while you might be taking a little hit in watch time or in your average view duration by adding these, it's worth it because it's going to result in more people taking the action that you want them to take. And that is the whole purpose behind you posting this content in the first place. Also, speaking of hurting results and analytics, a lot of people are concerned that YouTube shorts will hurt their YouTube channel because the YouTube shorts are obviously short and bring down the average view duration of your channel. And that's a very valid concern. And I will address that in a moment. So I just wanted to let you know that, but let me just give you a couple more tips before we do. And quick side note, if you're enjoying this video so far, if you're finding it valuable, please leave a like down below. It really helps get this content out there and I do appreciate it. Now moving on. So the next tip is to experiment. So things you can experiment with, right? Experiment with the content itself. Experiment with the core to action, experiment with the length, experiment with the words that you actually use. Just changing a couple of words can make a big difference or experiment with the image or the graphic that you use, or even just experiment with changing the colors of the arrow or the button or the text or whatever it is. Simply changing a color can actually make a surprisingly big difference in your actual conversion rate of that action. Also with the length, have a look at the length of your calls to action and see what happens if you bring it out to two to five seconds, if you bring it down to two seconds and see what ones are more likely to generate subscribers for you. And you can also experiment with the length of your actual content and your shorts in and of themselves as well to see what length your viewers tend to resonate with the most. Now, you don't have to be incredibly strategic with this experimentation. You don't have to be some super advanced algorithm or short form content wizard. You can literally just have an idea and be like, hmm, I wonder if this would change my results. Implement that idea and then just track the results and see what happens. And once you've got some benchmarks of kind of like what your short form content typically gets, then try to experiment with different things and try to improve those results in your next post. And you might accidentally break something. You might decrease those results, but eventually you'll stumble upon something that improves your bottom line. And then you can keep doing that thing and then improving on that thing and then improving on the next thing and improving on the next thing. And all of a sudden, if you're just watching these numbers and you're making sure that the improvements you're making aren't hurting your content, you end up quite a fair few steps ahead of where you were previously. So the next thing I would say is, and again, this is probably more of a personal opinion, but I don't think it's worth you bothering with with thumbnails. I haven't seen it being worth the time and effort that you would actually have to invest into creating the thumbnails in order for it to actually warrant actually going out there and creating those thumbnails in the first place. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, is that your custom thumbnail won't show up in the shorts shelf. YouTube will just pick a random frame that it thinks will work best. And so therefore all of your hard work creating a beautiful shorts thumbnail is going to be wasted. And um, the other thing is that having a lack of thumbnails, like having just that kind of unprofessional looking thumbnail on your shorts, where it's like, you can see it's a horizontal piece of content, your viewers will be able to see that and that plus the hashtag shorts in the title of the video and they will be able to see that it is a short and that's gonna helpfully help your viewers distinguish between your shorts and your regular pieces of content that will hopefully have much more highly edited and professional looking thumbnails. And the next thing I wanted to chat about is try and have everything 
on the same main channel, both your regular uploads and your YouTube shorts. And I think based on my research and my exploration into what most of the other people in the YouTube kind of education space are saying, I feel like this is kind of the main recommendation at this current time. The reason for this is kind of twofold. So posting shorts is not going to affect your regular uploads in any way. So if you post shorts at this current time, we're not seeing any indication that a short is going to result in your regular content video getting less attention as a result of that short in and of itself. Yes, you will see a lower average view duration overall when you start posting shorts. So your overall channel's average view duration will go down. But when you think about it, that actually doesn't really matter because YouTube doesn't promote your content based on your channel's overall average view duration. It promotes your content based on that specific pieces of content's actual statistics. So if a particular piece of content is really satisfying viewers and all of the metrics are indicating this, then YouTube will promote that piece of content. If the opposite is true, YouTube will do the opposite and it won't promote that piece of content. In summary, your overall average view duration of your channel doesn't actually have any say into that process. Yes, your channel may look like it's performing worse off overall on face value, but it's not actually affecting your content in and of itself. The other thing that you should know is that YouTube won't actually send your shorts to viewers who don't watch short form content. So a bunch of creators, including myself, were concerned that posting shorts on your channel is going to piss off the viewers of your channel right now who aren't interested in watching short form content, especially if you're posting more shorts than you are of your regular content. The positive side of that is that YouTube actually will not recommend your shorts to viewers and subscribers of your channel who have a proven track record of not being interested in short form content. And YouTube have actually said that and announced that themselves. So don't worry too much about that side of things. Sure, it may make your channel look a little bit less pretty because of the fact that there's all these different types of content, but it's not actually going to result in a whole bunch of negative results that are at all substantial enough in order to warrant not posting shorts content in the first place. So that's it. Those are my tips and tricks for promoting great short form content that will get picked up and promote your channel. I hope you found this helpful and uh, I will finish this video right now.